हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई से अकेडमी In this lecture, let us understand a problem on discrete time Fourier transform. Here, we need to find the discrete time Fourier transform of the rectangular pulse, which is shown in this figure, and also we need to plot the spectrum. So, from this rectangular pulse, we can write x of n is equal to one for n value ranging between minus n one to n one. and it will be zero otherwise so x of n is 1 for n value ranging from minus n1 to n1 for other values of n the signal x of n is zero now let us write the standard formula of fourier transform so x of omega is equal to summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n exponential to the power of minus j omega n now x of n is equal to 1 for n value ranging between minus n1 to n1 so here summation will be from minus n1 to n1 x of n value will be 1 so let us substitute those values so we will get x of omega is equal to summation of minus n1 to n1 1 into exponential to the power of minus j omega n now let us put l is equal to n1 plus n so from this we can say n will be equal to l minus n1 so let us use these two in above equation and we can write x of omega is equal to summation of let us write the limit later first let us substitute the above terms so that we will get exponential to the power of minus j omega into l minus n1 now since we have taken l is equal to n1 plus n therefore when n is equal to minus n1 at that case l will be equal to 0 when n is equal to n1 at that case l will be equal to 2 n1 so let us use these two values as limit so limit will be from l is equal to 0 to 2 n1 so we can write the above equation as summation of l is equal to 0 to 2 n1 exponential to the power of minus j omega l into exponential to the power of j omega n1 now let us take this term outside the summation so we can write the above expression as exponential to the power of j omega n1 summation of l is equal to 0 to 2 n1 exponential to the power of minus j omega l so we can write this expression as exponential to the power of j omega n1 into summation of l is equal to 0 to 2 n1 exponential to the power of minus j omega whole to the power of l now we can use the formula summation of n1 to n2 a to the power of n we can write it as a to the power of n1 minus a to the power of n2 plus 1 divided by 1 minus a so using this formula we can write this equation as x of omega is equal to exponential to the power of j omega n1 into exponential to the power of minus j omega whole to the power of 0 minus exponential to the power of minus j omega whole to the power of 2 n1 plus 1 whole divided by 1 minus exponential to the power of minus j omega so this term will be equal to 1 therefore we can write the above equation as exponential to the power of j omega n1 into 1 minus exponential to the power of minus j omega whole to the power of 2 n1 plus 1 whole divided by 1 minus exponential to the power of minus j omega we can write exponential to the power of j theta into exponential to the power of minus j theta 
as exponential to the power of 0 that is nothing but 1 and also exponential to the power of j theta by 2 into exponential to the power of j theta by 2 is equal to exponential to the power of j theta. Using these formulas we can write this equation as x of omega is equal to exponential to the power of j omega n1 multiplied with exponential to the power of minus j omega 2n1 plus 1 by 2 into exponential to the power of j omega into 2n1 plus 1 by 2 minus exponential to the power of minus j omega 2n1 plus 1 by 2 into exponential to the power of minus j omega 2n1 plus 1 by 2 whole divided by exponential to the power of minus j omega by 2 into exponential to the power of j omega by 2 minus exponential to the power of minus j omega by 2 into exponential to the power of minus j omega by 2. Therefore, we can write above expression as x of omega is equal to exponential to the power of j omega n1 into if we take exponential to the power of minus j omega into 2n1 plus 1 by 2 from the numerator as common and from the denominator if we take exponential to the power of minus j omega by 2 as common. So, we will be left out with exponential to the power of j omega into 2n1 plus 1 by 2 minus exponential to the power of minus j omega 2n1 plus 1 by 2 whole divided by exponential to the power of j omega by 2 minus exponential to the power of minus j omega by 2. In the previous step we got this expression. In this expression if we combine all this exponential term we will get x of omega is equal to exponential to the power of j omega n1 minus j omega 2 n1 by 2 minus j omega by 2 if this denominator term if we take it to the numerator it will be plus j omega by 2. So, it is multiplied with. So, to write this term we can use the formula sin theta is equal to exponential to the power of j theta minus exponential to the power of minus j theta divided by 2 j. So, using the above expression we can write 2 j sin theta is equal to exponential to the power of j theta minus exponential to the power of minus j theta. So, using this we can write this term as 2 j sin omega into 2 n 1 plus 1 by 2 whole divided by 2 j sin omega by 2. So, in this equation so we can cancel out these two. So, we can cancel out these two terms and also we can cancel out these two terms. So, this will be equal to exponential to the power of 0 that is equal to 1 and also we can cancel out these two 2 j. So, we will be left out with x of omega is equal to sin omega 2 n 1 plus 1 by 2 whole divided by sin omega by 2. So, we can write this expression as x of omega is equal to sin omega by 2 into 2 n 1 plus 1 whole divided by sin omega by 2. So, this is the expression for Fourier transform of the given discrete signal. So, this is for omega not equal to 0. If we take omega as 0, we can write x of 0 will be equal to 2 n 1 plus 1. So, this is the expression for omega is equal to 0. So, let us plot the spectrum. So, let us write the sync function. 
at omega is equal to 0, x of 0 will be equal to 2n plus 1. So, this is the magnitude of the spectrum. So, we can write the magnitude at omega is equal to 0 as 2n1 plus 1. So, this is the magnitude at omega is equal to 0. Now, we need to find this 0 crossing point value. So, to find 0 crossing point, let us take sin omega by 2 into 2n1 plus 1 divided by sin omega by 2 is equal to 0. So, this will be 0 when omega by 2 into 2n1 plus 1 is equal to plus or minus n pi. So, from this we can say omega will be equal to plus or minus 2n pi divided by 2n1 plus 1. So, using this we can write the 0 crossing value. So, here we need to put different values for n from 0, 1, 2 and so on up to infinity. So, if you put n is equal to 0 at that case omega value will be equal to 0. So, for n is equal to 0 we will get value as 0. For n is equal to 1 we will get the value as 2 pi divided by 2 n plus 1. So, at this 0 crossing point we will get the value as 2 pi divided by 2 n 1 plus 1. Similarly, towards left hand side we will get minus 2 pi divided by 2 n 1 plus 1. Now, if you put n is equal to 2, we will get 4 pi divided by 2 n plus 1. So, that will be at this point. So, if you put n is equal to 3, we will get 6 pi divided by 2 n 1 plus 1. So, that will be at this point. So, this is how you can find the 0 crossing value. This is about problem on DTFT for a rectangular pulse. Hope you have understood the problem. Thank you.